folks, Joseph Sabori here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, which I finally saw the buddy cop action comedy that finally made its return, Bad Boys for Life, which is the long-awaited third installment in the Bad Boys franchise, with the first Bad Boys that came out 25 years ago in 1995, it's going to celebrate uh, in a few months. And their sequel, Bad Boys 2, that came out 17 years ago in 2003. Yeah. Following two detectives who are wisecracking with each other, Mike Loray and Marcus Burnett, both played by Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. They're reuniting together again, only this time they're about to solve an old case that involves an evil villain that's going around murdering people. And apparently uh, one of them might be involved. Yeah. Also joining in with a new team of of uh, young um, also joining in with a new team of youngsters um, which is head by a headquarters called Ammo so that way they'll be able to stop them. Yeah. So yes, um, and of course they're joined by their captain, who's been around uh, since the franchise started. Uh, name, uh, name of course, uh, name of course Conrad Howard, uh, played by Joe Pantiano. Yeah. Now, as you know. Um, Bad Boys was the first film that started the directorial debut of Michael Bay because uh, before that uh, he was doing commercials and music videos such as Meat Lowe's I Will Do Anything For Love But I Won't Do That basically a take on Phantom of the Opera meets Beauty and the Beast but it has the style of an basically an action horror film if you think about that but it was beautiful I mean, yeah, because I know he's always been known for having explosions and and sexy girls. Well, that sort of way. Um, and of course, he's known for doing the commercial of the Got Milk um, commercial that started uh, with Sean Whalen from um, The People Under the Stairs, the Wes Craven film, which was a radio in, which was a radio calling contest. Yeah, that one. So that alone would made him a household name. And of course he went on to have a long string career, even though he's been criticized a lot. No kidding. Okay, but hey. Well, apparently um, both of their films were criticized um, by local critics. I mean, although some people actually gave it a pass you know they they actually enjoy the chemistry of, of Smith and and Lawrence together and it was really nice um, well other critics are just saying that they're not giving them any favors because of their their script you know the script has been written pretty poorly or anything or the fact that the action was going all over the place I mean that sort of thing and they felt like it's a rip-off of all these other buddy cop movies like Lethal Weapon all come to mind. Yeah. I mean, there's been so many buddy cop movies over the years, even before Lethal Weapon. So, it's almost like, geez, you know, like there hasn't been anything, you know, it's a, they're acting like, you know, there hasn't been anything before it. You know, obviously. I mean, I, I love buddy cop movies, you know, they're fun, you know, because, you, you know, when, when you see films like this, you know, you, you know, you want to hear a lot of, you know, funny jokes, even some hard-edged ones that can definitely get away or, or everything, I mean, that's what they were going for. I mean, as you know, of course, uh, Will Smith and, and Martin Lawrence, you know, at the time, you know, when they did the first film, you know, they were already in their popular series, uh, The French Prince of Bel-Air and Martin, you know, all which were 
becoming a hugely successful uh, shows um, on two networks. You have Fox and NBC. Um, so this was the first time they got to team up together in a whole different way. And that's how they became you know, this popular. <laughs> and I love that. You know, I love the chemistry. Because um, I know in the first film, uh, they're about to protect um, a young girl, you know, played by Teo Leone, against a, a ruthless um, criminal, played by Chike uh, Cairo. I don't know if I pronounced it right, but he was the actor uh, uh, best known for the, the guy who hired um, Nikita. Yeah, for the secret government agency in the movie La Femme de Kida, the Luc Besson film. And while in the sequel, though, um, we found out that uh, Marcus Burnett actually has a sister who is a, believe it or not, a, who, believe it or not, is a, uh, a special agent. Uh, played by Gabrielle Union from Bring It On. Uh, joins in with his wife, uh, Teresa, played by Teresa Randall. Um, which I know this was the film that that has uh, Michael Shannon in it. That was one of his earlier roles. As, also has Peter Stormare as Alexi. With uh, Jordi Mola playing the most ruthless villain of them all, Johnny Tapia. <laughs> yeah. And... I'm kind of a bit surprised that this is the first sequel that finally gets a positive feedback from critics, you know, after the first two films got, you know, mixed reviews or critically panned. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, I guess maybe because they haven't been dead against uh, Michael Bay or, or something like that. But I guess, well, third time's the charm, I guess, for, for everyone. But I always loved the first two Bad Boys, you know, no doubt about it. So I'm always going to defend these films. I always enjoy watching them. I saw them ever since I was a kid. And then, of course, <laughs> when I'm already in my college years, you know, I was you know, 18 or 19. Well, at this rate, 18. But, <laughs> but they're always fun to watch. Uh, they really will. I mean, even if the soundtrack kind of sucks. Um, well, I did like the song, which is used as their theme song, of course. The same song as, as used as a theme song to the long-running uh, reality show that was on Fox, Cops, um, of course, Bad Boys by Inner Circle. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the movie stars Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Vanessa Hugens, yes, from High School Musical, don't give a crap about those films, but I know she went on to do uh, Grease Live. Yeah, it was a live uh, musical that aired on Fox. Uh, it is released on Blu-ray. Uh, that was part of the uh, Free Pack uh, Grease collection. So I don't know if you can still pick that up, but it came out uh, two years ago. Anyway, Alexander Lurig, Charles Melton, Paola Nunez. Yeah, a Mexican actress, Kate Del Castello, another Mexican actress who's been in, in several soap opera shows out there, so if you're familiar with, which is interesting because um, she was actually going to be um, in a new um, upcoming uh, drama, a crime drama that involves uh, a Mexican criminal by the name of El Chapo. It was going to be directed by Sean Penn. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but I've been hearing about that uh, in recent years. So I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Or maybe it did. I'm, I'm not so sure. Uh, Nikki Jam, which is a reggaeton um, hip hop artist. Uh, Joe Pantiano, the yeah, I mentioned. Teresa Randall, who we last saw her in the second movie. She returns. Uh, she's been in a lot of work, too. She was actually in Beverly Hills Cop Free, uh, among others. Jacob uh, CPO, Jamie Newman, 
Messi, Furlan. Uh, Michael Bay makes a cameo appearance in the movie. <laughs> yeah, who, who happens to be the director of the first two films. And DJ Kali. Yes, who has been known for doing um, a lot of uh, music and all that. Okay. It's written by Chris Brenner, Peter Craig, Joe um, Conahan. Yes, the same writer who wrote Smoking Aces, The A-Team, and just recently the Death Wish uh, remake, which I did not care for. It's produced by Jerry Bokheimer, um, which of course we do get to see the, the Don Simpson Jerry Bokheimer Films logo as seen since the 90s. I mean, they, they always keep bringing that logo back, even though Don Simpson died in 1996. Yeah. So it's Jerry Bokheimer. And it so anyway, it's based on the characters by George Gallo. And it's directed by two Belgian filmmakers, uh, Adele El Arby and Bala Fala. I think I pronounced their names right. If I didn't, then, well, hey, at least I tried. The movie began set 17 years ago. Miami detectives, Mike Loray and Marcus Burnett, yeah, they're just going around, you know, swerving during the car chase scene, which you thought that they were going around chasing all these bad guys, but because you see all these motorcycle cops around. But it turns out that they're actually racing straight to the hospital to find out that Marcus had just became a grandfather to the birth of his uh, grandson. So Marcus' attention was to retire, so that way he can take care of his grandson and the rest of the family. So then he also gets to relax, um, much to Mike's dismay. So they just had a celebration party, you know, just having fun uh, with the rest of their friends and and families, and also join in with uh, Captain um, Comrade Howard, that was played by Joe Pantiano. Um, which at this rate, when both Mike and Marcus were just racing, you know, just for their own plans, all of a sudden she, Mike, got shot by a young assassin by the name of Armando Amas. Yes, who's played by Jacob Scipio, who just recently helped stage a prison escape of his mother, who's known as the witch, named Isabel Artes, who's played by Kate Del Castello. Yeah. Which is a very uh, gruesome um, opening of the escape, you know, where she goes around slashing and dicing all these uh, police guards around and putting them straight into the laundromats. I mean, that was really fucked up. She is totally evil. So anyway, Isabel sent uh, Armando to assassinate everyone that's involved in this particular case of Artez's cartel run that's run by her and her husband Benito that includes Mike because they actually sent her to prison uh, along with her husband and she's one of the survivors because they all have died now despite being told to kill Mike last Armando actually targeted him first as he redeems to be the biggest threat of to their plans. But unfortunately he proceeds over the next six months to assassinate everyone involved. Which all of them got killed. Uh, They're being sent directly in body bags. Meanwhile Mike is already uh, getting a full recovery after being in a coma for like a few months. Only to announce that, well, at first you thought this was going to be a funeral, but actually it turned out to be a wedding. <laughs> yeah, a wedding of uh, Marcus's daughter, uh, Megan, played by Bianca Belfon, was joining in with uh, Reggie, played by Dennis Green. Yeah, they're about to get married with each other. Um, so then, of course, um, 
Marcus decided to go straight into retirement this time around as Mike just had a near-death experience and he was praying to God that if he survives he'll never turn into violence again which leads to a fallout between each other. Um, now despite of his orders uh, through Captain Howard he learns the identity of an arms dealer who's selling all these ammunitions that's used in his assassination attempt by Booker Grassi and he's played by uh, so apparently that's where we have the team of youngsters that's led by Mike's ex-girlfriend Rita played by Paola Nunez she's very beautiful called uh, Advanced Miami Metro Operations known as Ammo yeah that's where we meet um, Kelly, Dorn, Ralph uh, all played by Vanessa Hugens, Alexander Lewig, and Charles Melton. So, they're about to send um, all their drones around. I mean, they, they hide inside their operation, their operating system inside this uh, big truck. So, the team goes to a business deal uh, for Grassy, which he's holding, obtained evidence to bring him in. But when Mike sees that the biters are attempting to kill him, um, he tries to save him, but it was too late. Soon afterwards, um, Marcus received a call from his older foreman named Carver Remy, who actually warns him that everyone who has been assassinated, <clears throat> who actually protected him completely, and he was asking for help. So Marcus picked up Mike to go to Carver's home. He yeah, asked because he even brought in his grandson to join in <laughs> but he's going to be able to put him straight to um, <clears throat> to his wife's um, house uh, for protection um, forgot the baby wipes but anyway as soon as they get there Carver was being thrown and was killed straight into uh, Marcus's car and yeah <sighs> which is really messed up so then Mike just goes around um, you know, fighting against Armando, who's the one who killed him, and then he recognized who he is. You know, by seeing his eyes, and then he ran away. And that's where we get that angle shot. That's kind of like the first film, you know, where we see the dolly shot of both, yeah, you know, Marcus and Mike together. <clears throat> I love that shot. So sometime later on. Captain Howard uh, tells Mike that it may be time for him to retire as well, which I know this is where it's going to lead to a very sad moment. And I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to give away for those who haven't seen it. But um, we also learned that uh, Marcus uh, enlists the help of Ammo to track down Grassy's accountant was the one that sold the ammunition. Yeah, there was a big fight. And apparently, you know, this is a guy who looks exactly like <laughs> like um, John Goodman on steroids. <laughs> that, that, that that was the case. <laughs> I know, but that's not John Goodman. Um, anyway, um, he identifies that the key suspect happens to be Swaylo, who's played by Nicky Jam, uh, his real name is Lorenzo Rodriguez, and apparently he was the guy that Marcus had coached basketball with. Yeah, unfortunately they lost. So anyway, they crashed uh, the birthday party for him, but he flees as fast as they can, so that's where it leads to a chase scene with Ammo uh, joining in, because they were in disguise and they're about to stop him. It was like a, a violent shootout too. Which I know both uh, Mike and Marcus were riding on the motorcycle, you know, going after these guys. And it goes all the way straight to the helicopter scene. And this is where Amando escapes, and, and he actually shot Swaylo, which he was about to go up to the helicopter, and Mike joins. So he got killed. But then we learn that ammo is ready to be shut down because of their recent failure and then this is where we get lead to a bigger twist that we didn't see it coming um, 
Again, not going to mention that. Um, but it was up to both uh, Mike and Marcus that one last time they're going to fight to the death to go after the witch, which is Isabel, and Armando by going all the way to Mexico City, straight at the Hidego Palace, where this is where she joins in with the rest of his, the rest of her crew to go after. So let's leave it at that. But um, I really did enjoy this movie. I loved it. In fact, it's actually the best of the franchise. I mean, even though I love the first two films, I'm definitely defending them, no doubt about it. I don't care what critics say. I mean, they should make it up for that. But it was really um, refreshing to see both Smith and Lawrence back together again, reuniting their characters. Especially Lawrence, too, because I hardly ever see him anymore. I mean, the last time I saw him in a movie was the Big Mama's sequel called Like Father, Like Son, which he teams up with Brandon T. Jackson from Tropic Thunder and the Percy Jackson movies. Yeah, that was him. And that was a terrible sequel. But then again, you know, I thought the second one was bad, too. If you ask me, it should have been standalone. Uh, with the first movie, but hey, that's just me. But I, I understand. Um, but a lot lately, uh, having to see him back on screen, he looks pretty chubby now. I mean, he's older, but chubbier than he was in the first two films. So, boy, hard, hard to believe. I didn't see his last movie that he did uh, that came out recently called The Beach Bum. That's the one with Matthew McConaughey, so I'd have to check that one out. Um, but it's just nice to see him again. I'm happy. And Will Smith, on the other hand, is still excellent. Because, you know, he's doing big. Even though he's been going through a lot of recent flops. Although I definitely love uh, Spies in Disguise recently. And I did a review on that. It was really fun. Love that movie. Um, I'm not so sure if it's doing so well at the moment. But so far, I know this movie's actually going big at the box office. In fact, it's going to be a huge hit. So I'm happy for that. Uh, as for the supporting cast, um, um, with uh, Paola Nunez, I mean, she's very beautiful. Also attractive, too. I, I love that. It's nice that they have a, another girlfriend to join around for <laughs> for Mike. I, I thought she was very... Uh, she was strong. Uh, wonderful... Uh, Wonderful and very tough too. Love that and and the fact that yes, I know Mike made a big mistake on dumping her. Anyway, um, as for the rest, uh, the Vanessa Hugens surprisingly was great as Kelly. She was pretty uh, sexy too. I couldn't believe it, um, but she got to do the job done. I think this is a way better role than the High School Musical movie. That's for sure. Um, Join in with Alexander Ludwig as Dorn. Yeah, he was... Um, he's basically um, a wizard type. I mean, he, he, you know, he does all the gadgets and stuff. And he also uses the drone you know, to search for all these uh, clues and, and going after all these bad guys and all. Trying to find out. I thought that was cool. But we learned that, you know, he had fight once, you know, he beat up all these uh, guys here, but he, he was into fair, but unfortunately uh, he had joint pain, so he was recovering from all his wounds and stuff, so he was taking therapy. We also got the Asian guy named Ralph, <laughs> played by Charles Milton, so there's some bickering here and there. Um, also, uh, Kate Del Castello, um, is terrific and deadly as um, Isabel Artez as the witch. I mean, boy, this is definitely the biggest role I've ever seen coming from her. I mean, this this is a character you really want to hate because of all the the terrible, all the the gruesome and terrible things that she's done. But it, it was an act of revenge uh, against uh, Mike and the rest of the put her there. So this is a vendetta against him. And joining in with um, her son uh, Armando played by Jacob 
Ski PO, yeah, he was um, he was fine. Um, I'll give him some credit. And Joe Pliantiano, I mean, it's great to see him again, um, reprising his role as Conrad Howard. He's always been uh, the best part of all the Bad Boys films. You know, he's white. He always loves the wisecrack and always tries to help them out, even though they're both always getting into bigger trouble. You know, doing all these assignments. Yeah. Um, it was nice to see um, Reggie and Megan again. You know, they just got married, so it was really cool. Uh, Michael Bay makes a cameo appearance uh, as the wedding MC. You know, he he was on the mic, you know, explaining about um, the really about the the best wedding that they're about to have. Yeah, so that that was a nod to them. Um, Nicky Jam wasn't bad either, and that was DJ Kali, who played Manny the Butcher. <laughs> yeah, the, there was a scene where, because they had to watch that uh, viral video that that uh, Amanda posted, and yeah, apparently there was a fight scene against him and, and Mike. Well, you get the idea. Um, some very um, impressive action scenes all the way around. I mean. It's not exactly as big as um, the sequel, uh, Bad Boys 2. I, I know the first one didn't have that much action scenes, but still, it had all of them that's included. Like, the, there's a violent shootout that's happening, and then there's a scene with the helicopter all the way through the climax and all of that that went into it. So, either way, I mean, I know it's not something that Michael Bay was doing but it, it's pretty close so that's where it kind of tones down a bit but it's all there and all the jokes which I'm not gonna give away because I'm not gonna even mention it but even though they are very funny um, they're still as PC, on PC as, as they could be so I'm, I'm glad they didn't they didn't get forced into it so I'm glad to hear that they actually wrote a very impressive script uh, so they did the best they can not to f force fed into it that's what I was afraid of too um, and it's nice that you got direct a new team of directors to join in um, so instead of Michael Bay it's Adele L. R. R. B. and Balad Fala and they both did a great job uh, directing this this is the first time they got to do a bad boys film and, and they actually know exactly what they're doing so but they're trying to kind of mimic the the style that Michael Bay has done so I can see where it came from because they've been a huge fan of the first two films so I, they they want to go for the spirit um, the soundtrack is what it is you know just a mixture of reggaeton and hip-hop you do get to hear the theme song uh, Bad Boys by Inner and of course the song Bad Boys um, that was sung by Inner Circle, you know, the theme song, which actually sound high pitched, uh, but they also had a remix as well that was actually done by none other than P. Diddy, uh, along with Black Rob and Mark Curry. Um, and then there's like other songs too, everything from Pitbull to Little John, I mean all of that. Even Jaden Smith, uh, Will Smith's son, joins in. I mean, there is one minor flaw. But that's okay. I, I can live with that. Um, I, I don't want to mention it, but it's it's basically had to do with the twist. But let's just uh, keep it that way. But it's all fun. Some great action scenes. Um, terrific villain. Great cast all the way around. I enjoy it. And definitely would love to pick this up on Blu-ray someday along with the first two films so I can have this in my collection. So that way I can have all the fun out there. So anyway, that's Bad Boys for Life and I give the movie five stars. Why not? <laughs> it's the best movie of 2020. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.